Hey there, everybody. It's Rush from Path Let's Pedal. Oh, Toffer from Pedal Mozilla. <laughs> Let's see that works. Sorry. Yeah. Was... Didn't realize we were kicking it over <laughs> so quickly there. Hey there, everybody. It's Rush from Path Let's Pedal. And Toffer from Pedal Mozilla. And tomorrow we're going to tell you guys how to start your own coffee outside group. Yep. There's been a lot of interest around uh, how to do this since we posted uh, a couple of videos from Coffee Outside. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna rely on Toffer's experience as Pell Missoula <laughs> and give you four, four, four to five tips on how to start your own coffee outside. Quick history, if you guys aren't familiar about coffee outside, it's a hashtag started <laughs> by our friend uh, Rob Perks from Ocean Air Cycles. And I think the whole idea was to just bring people together around coffee and around bikes. And since he started it, there's been a bunch of groups mm -hmm. around the country starting their own like little like coffee outside. And then yeah, it feels yeah. like yeah for a couple of years now. I feel like that kind of broke through maybe 2016, early maybe late 2015. He started kind of posting about what he was doing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so since then it's kind of become like a fun way for bike people to get together. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I've been, we've been to the coffee outside in Portland, you know, the one in Missoula. Yeah. Uh, and we know that there's a super active group in Austin. Um, I've been to two in LA. Yeah. And uh, we saw, we've seen, we've been seeing other ones pop out across the country, uh, around the world. So th this is kind of our, our best practices, tips, <laughs> things to know about yeah. when you start your coffee outside. Yep. And tip number one uh, is to keep it fun. I just think about this because I used to be, a teacher and when people sometimes like the, the people that come to it for the first time they could be like they can apologize it's like oh I didn't bring right. this thing or that thing and uh, you know it's like I'm always like it's not an assignment for school <laughs> like this is not or like a project for work like you're not being graded you're not gonna like be fired you're not right. gonna be like you're always welcome to come back and so while I enjoy bringing like a hand grinder and <laughs> all of my stuff to like make coffee there. I understand that for some people, whether it's they don't have the time in the morning because they have to get to like work faster or they right. just don't want to take the time to set all that stuff up. Um, don't worry about it. I don't think it's about like shaming someone for not bringing the like the right, <laughs> right. Uh, the right grinder, the right grinder, the right pour over system. Yeah, like yeah. it's about like whatever people have and if, um, I mean, I even bring like a thermos of coffee to share, like right. if people don't bring anything. So uh, for me, it's about getting together with other bike people, mm -hmm. about making it fun for everyone. And so there's no kind of, and then, I mean, so there's no judgment of like whatever you bring or don't bring. If people don't have their full on coffee set up <laughs> dialed in yet, still be welcoming, you yeah. know, make it a uh, inviting uh, space. Uh, real confession, uh, since we've been going to the Missoula Coffee Outside, we actually pre-make the coffee and just bring it down there. Just because, like you said, like some people don't have time or they might not might not have, you know, all the accoutrements just yet. Yeah. Point number two is uh, be consistent. And I think you, when we were talking about this, you meant be consistent in terms of like time and, and location. Yeah, so for us, we have ours on a Wednesday, which I know other places can do it on a Friday. Mm -hmm. That's just also like what your local community kind of like what makes it work for you and your mm -hmm. local community. But having it like on Wednesdays, like people know every Wednesday we're gonna get together. I am kind of the main organizer, but like if I'm out of town, um, I have uh, Ali who's been on mm -hmm. the channel um, and who helps me out with like a lot of Pedal Missoula stuff. Mm -hmm. I, she's gonna be there and I'll give her some of like right. the stuff that helps me get, get it organized. So that like every Wednesday there's somebody there, somebody there to greet people and kind of be right. the like, the face of it. The face of it and to yeah. greet people. And we do it weekly, but I think you could do it like monthly and just know, people know on kind of like the breakfast on the bridges in Portland where it's yeah. like the last Friday of the month, people yeah. know this is going to be going on. Yeah. And so that helps people like schedule it into their lives. They know like every Wednesday here in Missoula that this is going to be happening. Mm -hmm. um, but also it's like that helps you get like either get up in the morning, like you know like this one day you're gonna have to get up earlier. That or... is literally like the one day I get up that early. <laughs> so it's good for, uh, you know, I think one point, you know, consistency, it's it's something that people can schedule around. Yeah. Because it's not like, you know, oh, the day before, like it's changing or something. Right. But it's, it also helps people, I feel like, form habits. You know, yeah. now I know like, okay, every like Wednesday morning I have to get up early. This is something that's a part of my life now. Yeah. Uh, and it's because it happened on a consistent basis. You know, if it was, kind of more intermittent or, or random, then I don't think, you know, a lot of people would be as loyal. Yeah, so it kind of helps just 
I think make it easy for everyone. There's not like a discussion of when when is it happening right. again? What are you doing? It's just everyone knows. So consistency, I think, plays a, an important part in kind of having it just everyone kind of get on the same page and also takes like the stress off the organizer of having to like <laughs> pick, pick a day <laughs> pick a day um i think consistency i mean it, it can be tough because people have said to me why does it start so early uh we start ours at 7 15 and part of that is like people have to get to work still right that's um right. <laughs> so like it has to start kind of earlier because if you are, are going to hang out for like 45 minutes an hour right that means that you have to i mean that means people are going to be leaving for work around 8 15 so you gotta kind of get there a little bit earlier. Point number three uh, is to have uh, some kind of public facing communication about the event. Uh, I think what we've discovered is Instagram is a great tool, Facebook events, uh, yeah. Facebook page is a great tool. Uh, it seems like a lot of cyclists are, are on Instagram and a lot of cyclists that like to do coffee outside are on in Instagram as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Instagram is nice. You can have a hashtag and then that also you know, when people, as you have, as you do it longer and you use that hashtag, it also gives people like a reference point mm -hmm. so that they can look at what your group does and then they're not like, so, I mean, I think that's the nice thing about hashtags is right. you can kind of look and see like <laughs> when it's an event like this, like, oh, what do people do? What's kind of the tone of it? Who right. shows up? How many yeah. people are there? So it gives people like a little bit. Yeah, I think, I think related to this, but it wasn't on the official list is to take, to take photos. And oh, kind of yeah. document the experience, yes. um, you know, because like you were saying, like people, uh, I find like when they discover an event like this, they'll look through you know, the Instagram feed, Facebook feed, and just see if that's their people, you know, right. and it's important to kind of show, uh, you know, people having fun, you know, people there like enjoying themselves, uh, just yeah. so people can self-select. Right. Yeah. I try to take pictures of like people's coffee sets up, set up so that people know that there's like a variety of coffee setups because that's inevitably there's different kind of right. um, different types of like ways of heating water, different ways of pouring over, you yeah. know, AeroPress and whatnot. And then food, you know, just so that people kind of see that there is actually, there <laughs> is actually food at these things, um, that people bring that. Um, Cause yeah, I mean like I think, and especially like the age of the internet and Instagram, it can right. often feel like so things are hyped and right. then you're like, but what's it really like when I show up there? And right. I, I try to like close that gap a little bit to right. show people like, no, it's just this thing. Um, yeah, and there, yeah, yeah, yeah. There might be people that are curious about going to the event and it's just, just seeing those images or, you know, just yeah. getting to like, no, you know, just the, the, the visual tone of uh, the Instagram might be the thing that, that pushes them. Right. Over. And then there's, I mean, Facebook, it's creepy because Facebook <laughs> is creepy where, you know, somebody likes <coughs> or is interested in an event or they're going to an event and then it tells their friends that they're interested or going. So that's kind of creepy, but it's also kind of helpful because people have learned about our coffee outside from the Facebook event page, from the Facebook event page, you know, that somebody will say they're going and then they're like, oh, like, I didn't know that existed here. Right. Um, and so then there's some people that have become like people that come all the time and they heard about it from like their friend being interested. Right. So that helps um, also like the organizer doesn't have to do like all this work of like reaching out, um, like allow social media to kind of do its creepy thing. The, the, alg the algorithm. The algorithm <laughs> sends it out into the wild. So another big, another big tip, uh, I think this is more for the uh, organizer's um, mental health, <laughs> <laughs> is uh, to keep doing it. Like yeah. it's hard, like, you know, you may see other places do it and you know, you want to share that same stoke and then you set it up and then no one shows up the first time or right. even the second time. Right. Um, I mean, our group has been, co I mean, uh, you know, even before I picked up, there was uh, Whitney Forteri was doing a, a coffee group here. So like, even though like I've been doing it for a year now, there was like a year or two where it was kind of the groundwork was being laid right. for more people to show up to it. Um, like we were talking about when we were opening that there's this kind of movement coffee outside has been happening for a couple of years right so in other places there have just been like they've had more time to develop right. their voice and kind of what their event is about mm -hmm. um, and and so yeah that can kind of when you first start something you're like oh my gosh like it was me and like my friend <laughs> we were the only two people and it's right. like yeah that might it might be that way and it might be because people are like really interested right but they're also kind of like ooh, who's yeah. what is this about and so yeah. keep doing it um i think my kind of one of my rules when i'm organizing like almost any bike event is that 
is that something that like I would do if nobody showed up? <laughs> you know, like if, if if like if this was a complete bust, would I still want to do what I'm organizing? Right. And it's like. Right. Yes, yes, you you should. And so, if the coffee outside thing, if you're doing it just to like have another picture to post on, I mean, maybe that's not the best motivation. Right. Though it could be. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's not the worst thing. But um, but yeah, like just like keep going with it. Keep posting about it. Um, be aware of like what's happening. You know that right now the winter may or may not be the best time. Um, Conversely, actually, I feel like more people show up, like kind of the people that only come like once a month, they somehow show up like on the rainy day or the snowy day in Missoula. Like, I'm not sure if they just feel like they have to commiserate. Yeah. Or like they're being tested by the weather and they're like, I'm not going to let the weather yeah. keep me from going outside and having coffee. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just be aware of that. That maybe there's um, eb ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows. And then also like that might make the winter time maybe a little bit better of a time. Cause then you can kind of like, as an organizer or as somebody who like wants to go, you have an excuse like, oh, it's so cold. Sorry, I haven't made it back in a month. Like, <laughs> cause yeah, that's totally legit. Or as an organizer, you like are getting your feet underneath you as far as right. what are some of your favorite things to do or how do you advertise it and how do you market it? Right. So just kind of not giving up on it just because you have low turnout. Or... Yeah, I mean like it, it all ties into all the other things. Um... You know, like, I feel like the people that, that go now, the regulars, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's been through, like, this habituation process, you know, like, that by having it consistent, yeah. uh, by getting to know people, um, but that wasn't always the case. Like, I feel right. like it, it's it's taken time. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the one we organize on Wednesdays has maybe 10 to 15 that can be, like, pretty solid. Um, if it's, like, for... Well, I was going to say like on a beautiful day, but even then I don't know. Like I feel like sometimes there's been like 20 people there and I'm not sure like why, why all of a sudden all these people showed up on this. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but I think that, yeah, it's like, it's hard to know. I mean, I've had also like, you know, the time change or like whenever like it started getting darker in the morning, like, and there was one morning where like after a year of doing it, I was like the only person there and I got there like 7.15 and it was like 7.45, 7.50 and like other people started trickling in and then there was only like maybe five of us. Right. And it was just like, yeah, there's going to be times where the weather just right. gets, or people are out of town and if like right. people's work trips or right. life kind of happens all at the same time, like, so don't take those things personally. It's just yeah. people doing stuff and that Yeah. some weeks you'll have five people, some weeks you'll have 20. Um, yeah. So I think like, uh, you know, maybe... A, adjust or set realistic expectations for attendance for attendance you know, don't be devastated if it's just like you and a friend or even just like you these things take time yeah. um you know and again i think you brought up a good point about you know what your, your motivations are you, know, you can't you know if it's like to get 100 people that might not be realistic and also like yeah. one thing i think we've discovered is uh, generally like the the number of people that show up to something like coffee outside is actually really dependent on population size of where you're at. Oh, sure. You like in Portland, it's fairly large because you know it's it's a big city or bigger city, and there's lots of cyclists. But yeah. in Missoula, uh, relatively small, uh, maybe a smaller subset still. Yeah. That are into this kind of thing, so you have to kind of set your expectations and adjust and, and correct for uh, population size. Yeah, I mean, I've kind of <coughs> just thought a lot about organizing around bikes and organize I mean I guess organizing in general and like how do you get people to come out for something I've done in different places I've organized book clubs and different things and so you're always yeah. kind of thinking like what draws people to an event or doesn't uh one percent of a population comes to something in Portland <laughs> and you get one percent of the population coming to something in Missoula those numbers are going to be just different because right. there's like <laughs> over a million people in the Portland metro area yeah and there's only like a hundred thousand in the <laughs> yeah. uh, Missoula metro area. So yeah, um, yeah, just keep keeping those things in mind and and just yeah, if data <laughs> if data brings you solace, uh, you can find there it. There you go. I think. Um, sun like sunrises are a thing that um, I didn't know. I, I mean, you don't really care about until. I, I didn't know they existed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did, do people know that sunrises can often be just as beautiful as sunsets? Lies. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. If you get up really early, uh, yeah, you can see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
so the last point, this is kind of the optional point, yeah. uh, is uh, you know, this idea of coffee sponsorship. You know, we went to the Portland Coffee Outside, and I think they worked with uh, Ristretto yep. Roasters. Um, so I think our thoughts were, you know, not essential to start, right? Oh, but it yeah. does add some validation to the group, and it also allows you to kind of leverage like the coffee roasters built an audience. Yeah, so if, if they have an audience and if they're, it's like a place that already has, you know, um, a presence in your community, then, you know, they'll help you kind of get the word out. They can maybe repost some of your posts to their page and that kind right. of helps people know what's going on. Also, coffee beans, in my experience, are like, unless you go above and beyond and you're doing like pancakes outside and <laughs> some of the other stuff we do, Coffee, like having beans for people, is can be one of the like more expensive right. costs to this. Um, otherwise, I mean, if people bring their own stuff, but once again, like I kind of as an organizer, my idea, like if you show up, if you throw a party, you should like have chips. You should have <laughs> chips. And so, if you if you throw a coffee outside, it can be nice to have right. something for the people that show up to kind of um, right. to be there just as like a kind of a social gathering thing. And if you get a coffee roaster to give you like a bag of beans, yeah. and even if they give you, I mean, work out a deal. I mean, even if they don't give you like all the beans you would use, having some way to offset it and having somebody else to kind of help you get the word out can be just like a fun thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think that the coffee has been the thing that I would have spent the most money on. I mean, coffee right. can be 13 to depending, you know, $20. $20 a bag. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, if you're- It depends how artisanal it is. <laughs> yeah, so depending on like what type of coffee you're getting, you might have different price points there, and so it can be nice to have a coffee company help offset that cost. So, uh, so point number one, <laughs> keep it fun. Uh, yep. Be consistent, mm -hmm. uh, create some kind of public-facing social media presence. Um, don't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, set. Oh, yeah, maybe five then. Yeah, set your, you know, set your expectations, yeah. um, and you know, consider coffee sponsorship. Maybe, mm -hmm. uh, maybe not, 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 not like a necessary thing in the beginning, but nope. something to that that will help the process. Yeah. Um, yeah. So those are our tips for how to start your own coffee outside. If you guys have any questions. Leave those in the comments below. And if you guys have any uh, other suggestions for bike community building topics that oh, you yeah. want us to talk about, also leave those in the comments below. And as always, keep the supple side down.